This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we shall be glad in it. As for me, I will trust in you, O Lord. You are my God and my time is in your hands. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are holy, just, and righteous. We come before your throne to worship and adore you. We bow down and worship you in the beauty of holiness. The heavens declare your glory, and from our hearts and lips we offer you praise and thanksgiving. We bless your holy name, our Lord and our God, eternal loving and merciful God, we confess our sins in our thoughts, words, and actions against you and our neighbors. In your mercy and grace, forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Free us from selfishness and self-righteousness that we may choose your will and obey your commandments. Gracious God, we thank you for your forgiveness and your cleansing. We thank you for your protection, your provision, your guidance, through your grace, mercy, and faithfulness. Most of all, we thank you for our Lord and Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and rose again to give us a new and eternal life in you. Lead us daily by your Holy Spirit so that in and through our lives we will bring glory to you and to you alone. And as you have taught your disciples to pray, we pray likewise. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It is such a blessing today to come and to minister to you from God's holy words. I hope that what will be said today will be of a great encouragement to you. Let us go to the scripture for our reading for today. Our first reading is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 1 through 10. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 1 through 10. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains of spring, that flow out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. 
when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given to you. Our second reading is taken from Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Our third scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through to 28. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food. And the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn. God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you by worrying can add one cubit of his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more he will clothe you, O you, of little faith. God add his richest blessings to his holy word. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. On this day, I want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. And as God is our Heavenly Father, we can learn from him his character, his attitudes, and we can become good fathers like him. So I wish you all a happy Father's Day. God bless you, each one of you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you and we commit all the fathers into your hands. We ask a blessing upon each one of them. We pray that you will give them sound minds, healthy bodies, and a desire to serve you. Lord, we commit into your hands the church, your body. And I pray, Father, for a restoration and a revival among your people, among your family. I pray for their spiritual health, that they will grow closer to you. I pray that you will bless all your children financially. Give them the wisdom to spend it wisely. I pray for their health, that you will touch those that are sick, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Touch them from the inside and the outside. For those that are healthy, keep them healthy. We pray, Father, that your words will go forward with power and anointing. And men and women will come to know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, that they will be drawn closer to you. We commit our country into your hands. You see what's going on. 
We pray for our leaders and ask that you may grant unto them knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to do what is right and just. We pray for a healing of our nation too, Lord. In the midst of the medical crisis, you will keep us safe. You will give the medical scientists the wisdom to find a cure. Only you can do that. And so we commit it all into your hands. We pray a blessing upon your people all across this world. And Father, we pray that you will give, grant unto us peace. A peace that passeth all understanding. We lift up our hearts in praise and thanksgiving to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.